the next part of the lecture which is what to understand the GSM analytics market which stands for global social media analytics market so what it is right so to put it in very to break down to break it down into very simple terminology it's basically how big the market is right how big the whole social media market is and it is expected to grow and it has grown by a percentage of you know 30 percent in the last when the years of 2017-2021 and the whole market is around like 9 to 10 billion dollar industry right but what is the problem statement like so what is the core problem or the core issue which such media organizations government of individuals individuals are facing that is without a very clear strategy they are not very really, they are not able to understand the needs or requirements of the end users or the customers in this scenario so just to further clarify this and to further deep dive into you know what the whole notion of how this analytics works on the whole global scale can be very well visualized with this pyramid like structure wherein we have the data right so at the base of the pyramid you can see we have the big data or the longitudinal data collected over a time frame which com which computes for the most seg or the maximum segment of the pyramid and that is where the aggregation of data comes into place how they are accessed how they are stored whether they are stored in a safe and secure way or not so that all falls into the whole notion of data collection mechanisms, which I repeat again, has a couple of functions or attributes that is that is how they are stored, that is the aggregation of it, where they are stored, that is uh, how they are stored, um, that is in what type of storage is, how they are accessed, so on and so forth, and whether they are safe and secure or not because data is like the new oil or rather it is the new oil right so we need to ensure like we because due to various constraints in law in different countries like for uk or for eu there's a gdpr law which prevents persons or any organization to collect any personal information outside the geographical boundaries of a particular country right similar laws apply to the hipaa laws as well which cater specific to the healthcare segment or the healthcare industry per se so this whole process of gathering data where to store and how to store completes for the major chunk of the pyramid now as we move ahead we have the big information and the knowledge segment this is where the inferential understanding comes into play that is you can see very well here what insight can be gathered right to give a very simple example let's say you have a longitudinal data about medical questionnaires for a particular county or a state right so what are so what type of inferences one can gather right so let's say the attributes on a medical or a social questionnaire might have questions ranging from where have you been, what's your family structure like, what's your past education history, where have you worked, a very niche understanding as to how a social life must go on or has been going on in a particular county or, or, or a particular geographical location per se, right? Now, based on the longitudinal data collected over time in, spe in specific geographical location, what one can infer, right? So that is where the ability to build such models comes into play. So for the example which I stated before, one can easily infer, you know, the growth which has, uh, which, uh, so, so the growth the specific community has seen what were the factors which enabled that growth and what were the factors which will enable that growth in the coming times, right? So this is one such 
example or one such inference model one can build. And this is where core AI or computer science comes into play. That is with the data, what kind of end cores you want to have or what type of inferences you can make. And this can be very well handled by mathematical implementations such as uh, and very using very simple machine learning algorithm algorithms as well which are very which are at the end of the day they are mathematical equations pertaining solving a particular problem right so this is the next step as to from the data we have gathered what type of insight one can get and the last step or the smallest part wherein which is a part of the pyramid is the implementability part, right? So I've gathered the data, I have 100 inferences. Now from the 100 inferences, what are the 10 inferences which we can actually act on, right? Or which can be actually implemented in the real world society. So this is where the whole notion of global and global social media analytics, analytics come into play. And it's a huge market, believe me. Nobody 20 years back, nobody could have believed that social media can play a very important part in developing economic policies to government laws, to building the shape of everyone's life in and around the world, right? So this is where one can see understanding social behavior, right? So we can see that the unprecedented volume and the variety of content generated by the user as well as the interaction between them. And this is an opportunity for understanding the context of social behavior and building socially aware systems. So now what is social behavior and building such awareness systems? So the basic understanding here is there has been an opportunity to understand what type of thinking a person or a group of community or a group of people or a community might have and to build systems pertaining to those to those particular communities which can see an positive output or an end goal to it right so that's where understanding the social behavior of a community is very imperative and how one can understand is through the user generated content within the communities and like how they're communicating, what they're communicating, so on and so forth. So there are plethora of attributes which one can gather from the social needy social media graphs or the networks per se. We'll deep dive into social networks and I will try to explain a couple of very simple bare minimum social networks or the basic mediums which are used to define a social network and how can one understand and interpret from them so we'll go ahead with that in the next slide